not the staff. In the almost nine years I've been in the Army, a third of the time has been in combat, with the rest of the time spent preparing for combat, until last July when I joined the team here. And you can tell I'm enjoying it here because my uniform's a little bit tight. <laughs> <laughs> the Army at times is scary, and at times it's boring, but it's always more fun than not, and it's always overall more good than bad. In fact, I still love being a soldier, and I'm proud to represent the Army as a recruiting company commander throughout Southern California. But tonight, I don't want to bore you too much with me. I want to talk about two of my soldiers that epitomize the values and characteristics we are honoring here tonight. I want to tell you about PFC David Hess and Staff Sergeant Terry Brader. But first, let me define courage and valor. Courage is defined by Webster as mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. Valor is defined as strength of mind or spirit that enables a person to encounter a danger with firmness. And to me, valor is just a higher form of courage that can only be found when one's own life is put in the balance. I served with Private First Class David Hess in Afghanistan. He joined the Army as a mechanic, and we have, when he arrived at the unit, he learned there was a personal security platoon being made in the company. So he volunteered to come and be a part of it. He joined my, com he joined my company about four months prior to deployment, and trained with a mixture of other soldiers to be prepared to provide the security that either the battalion commander or the battalion command sergeant major would need when they were out on operations in the Zari province of Kandahar, Afghanistan. David was not an infantry guy, but he wanted to contribute, and he wanted to be a part of a special team. That took courage. He didn't have the same extensive training that a basic infantry soldier would have, but he had the desire. So in Afghanistan, he went on numerous missions with the commander until one day, a large buried bomb blew up nearby. The bomb detonated an Afghan Army Humvee, which sent a tire David's way and knocked him down, causing some injuries, but none too serious. David was okay. He was ordered on bed rest for a week and quickly became bored while he looked forward to when he could get back out on mission with his brothers. Well, he was allowed back out on his first mission. And on his first mission, the command sergeant major went to a minor base we call a combat outpost or a cop for short, which is significantly smaller than a normal base and closer to the enemy activity. I was at the same cop preparing for a different mission, and before leaving I saw David and proceeded to give him a hard time about his driving skills and other things. I asked him about his neck and why he didn't duck faster. David was in good spirits and very happy to be with his brothers out in the field. While well, as he was driving back, the lead vehicle in the convoy, as he's driving back to base, another deep buried bomb detonated. This one under his vehicle, killing him and the vehicle commander. David didn't know he was going to die that day. But he did know the dangers of his job firsthand, and he never wavered. David had courage. Staff Sergeant Terry Prater was one of my team leaders and squad leaders, and he was my friend. He served in Iraq in 2004 and deployed again with me in 2006. But I didn't meet him in Iraq. I met him in Texas when I came home because Terry received major injuries on a combat patrol in a dangerous area of Baghdad in 2004. Terry, like me, of course, was an infantryman. He was a soldier that could be trusted with any task, and he was pretty funny, too. He liked to fish for bass and was always prepared to discuss the art of it. But frankly, I was always bored by his fish talk. Terry loved to mess with me. Because if you didn't know, junior lieutenants get messed with a lot. It's like a badge of respect from the men. 
And one of the ways he did this was by training his three-year-old son to kick my shins whenever I was around. <laughs> I can understand why he always got a kick out of it. But back to the reason I had to wait to meet Terry. When he should have been in my platoon conducting combat operations, he was not there. And it was because I arrived month four of the deployment, and he got injured in month three. Sergeant Prater was on a patrol when his squad was ambushed. It was a complex ambush with machine gun and rifle fire, and as well as grenades used by the enemy. One of Sergeant Prater's soldiers was seriously wounded by a grenade blast. And while Sergeant Prater and another soldier were providing first aid and suppressing fire, another grenade landed near the injured soldier. So Terry used his body as a shield to protect the already wounded soldier and received fragmentation to the majority of his lower body. But he did his job. And he saved the other soldier's life. In the face of danger, Terry acted without regard to his own safety or well-being. And he had to be medically evacuated, as well as spend a year recuperating. For his actions that day, Terry earned a Silver Star which is the third highest award for valor a soldier can earn. <clears throat> Terry had courage and he displayed valor on that day in 2004. Terry also displayed courage every day up until the day he was killed almost exactly five years ago. He was killed by a roadside bomb during our second deployment. Courage and valor. These are the themes of tonight. And all those, although the circumstances of these stories I just told you are different than what takes place on the streets of Hemet, it's the same courage, it's the same valor that, became, that can be found amongst the firefighters, the police officers, the paramedics, and a few citizens that go above and beyond what's required. These men and women who volunteer to work in the fields they do display courage every day as they stand ready to do whatever is required of them to safeguard the lives of others. Not everyone is willing to make that commitment to sacrifice. In some days, these men and women are called into situations where their courage is tested, where valor is needed. Anytime a policeman Firemen or paramedic gets told they're going into harm's way, and they still go, knowing the potential costs. This is a valorous act. Like the soldier on the battlefield, however, they probably don't even think in those terms, as this type of daily decision seems commonplace to them. But I'm here to say it's not. Courage is never commonplace. So I'd like to ask, all those that have served their country or their community, whether on duty today or retired, to stand up so that we may honor your service. If you've ever served or are currently serving as a firefighter, police officer, or paramedic, or a soldier, please stand up. And I'd like everyone else to recognize their daily sacrifice.
that our local legislators and state legislators have and what responsibilities they have to, to our uh, community and to our, our state. And at this time, I'd like to ask Dan Walters, who has been always a pillar within the legislator's volunteer office, to come forward and receive a small token of our appreciation from Hammond American Legion.